Hey everybody, I have a Baccarat video for you. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me, Jimmy, when are you going to do more Baccarat videos? So I'm going to go ahead and play a little Baccarat for you guys tonight. Um, Baccarat, I think, is, is a fantastic game. Um, I think most people lose their money because of bad money management. Uh, just bets, uh, bet sizing is a serious problem with uh, the majority of the people who play Baccarat. Um, no disrespect, um, you know, to Asian people or anything like that. Most, let's be honest, most people who play Baccarat are uh, Asian. And um, I'm very familiar with Asian people, um, being that I date Asian girls all the time. Uh, but Baccarat is, it, it's the bet sizing that these people use uh, and it's not always Asian people, but majority of them, they're gamblers. They're big time gamblers and they'll just do random bets. Like, uh, I don't want to show you here cause I don't want to mess up our history of our, of where we're at, where we're at. I'm about to show you the history and the, the chart, but they'll do just stupid bets. They'll go like, they'll just be playing, uh, and they'll do you know, three, four, five hundred dollars on a player, um, and uh, they'll 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 win, and then they'll do seven hundred dollars the next hand. Like makes no financial sense. Or they'll they'll do two hundred dollars, and the next one they'll do seven hundred dollars, and then they'll do one thousand dollars. They're the bet amount that they make. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's it's almost, it's just like, I'm either going to win or I'm going to lose. I'm either going to go up big or I'm going to lose a lot. That's their attitude. So it doesn't really make much sense to me. There's no statistical creative thinking behind percentage-wise of, of how to ladder up and ladder down. They don't use anything like that. Is <laughs> I don't even know if they know what that means. So anyway, you go on history. So when I play Baccarat, I will not play the beginning of the shoot. I will not play any part of the shoot that's in the beginning. That's why you're seeing, I've already, to save you guys time, I've already ran this out. Now, I don't, um, I prefer more of a chop-chop type of board. So you are seeing a lot of banker runs on this board. Um, you've got one, you've got, you also have some, some player runs. So I consider a run, anything over, or anything over three. So as you can see, um, it does come down, but you do have a lot of ties. So it's not, you know, it's, it's tying. And then it switched over to banker and you got a big, big run here, but it never made the L. But the bottom line is anytime it goes over three, we have a saying, as I've taught you guys, if it don't drop, play the chop. So what that means is that if uh, this is what that means, see how this only went to two and then it went to a chop, then it's a chop, then it's a chop, boom, right here, when it hits the third one, you are always waiting on the fourth one. So you're not going to play that fourth one because you're always waiting to see if it's going to be, if you're considering it a board that is dropping. So the, the, the saying changes when it's dropping. If it drops, don't play the chop. It's the opposite. So if you have, if this, if this was all, under th if this was every if one of the all of these were at three and you never seen any get to four and then it goes back you're always going to play the opposite side and you're going to martingale it so you would have went like this it would have been player and you would have bet banker and you would have lost that would have been your first bet but then you would have then right now you'd be going back to banker now in this particular board is saying otherwise it's telling me that I have to be very careful 
to not play the chop when I see it dropping. When I see it dropping, okay? So what I would personally do here, um, I would wait to see, I would wait these next two. So I, let's go ahead and play these next two without playing, okay? Okay, so if we look at the history, it came again where it's coming down. That's why I said I would not play the chop here. I wouldn't feel comfortable. I, I know that it, it's been chopping since here. Because look, look at all these chops. But then what did it do? It ran straight down. What did it do again? It's running down, just like it has over here. So I would not bet this one either. So let's see what it does, okay? Okay, so that's a tie. So deal again. Okay, see, it's it's running, guys. You see this? It's running again. So this is a board right now where I'm just sitting there on the table with my money. I've patiently waited from the very beginning of the shoot, and I haven't even made a bet yet. That This would be the reality of me playing Baccarat. I would not have even made a bet yet. Now, if I'm... If I'm, um, if I see that, uh, if I go around the room, and I see that there's a board pattern that I like, and they're around 33% of the shoot, which is about where we are here, that's the only time I enter and start betting. Now, on a shoot like this, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and place my first bet right now on player. Now, if I lose, that's fine. I'm only gonna do a quarter, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and do a quarter uh, on player and just play the run. All right. So I got the first victory. Okay. So I'm going to go back. So I'm up a big whopping $25. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and play it again. Just, you know, I, the worst thing that can happen to me is I break even. Okay. Oh, and I got lucky with a tie. So I'm just going to repeat that bet and deal again. All right, so we get the loss, okay? So now we went back to the banker side, all right? Now, what I would do here, again, I would be playing the drop instead of the chop. I would be playing the drop. So I'm going to go with banker. Whether it wins or loses, I don't care. And because I lost, I'm going to go... But actually, even though I lost, I'm even. I'm not losing in the session. So therefore, I'm just going to try to get going up $25. Okay, and I get the win. Okay? So if I look at the history, I'm playing drops. Okay, so I'm going to play the banker again. Okay, and I got unlucky. I couldn't even beat a zero. <laughs> couldn't even beat a zero, guys. All right? So, now, very possible, very possible that this could start going to chop. But I can't play chops. I got four drops, four drops. I just cannot play chops on this board. Can't do it. I got to go with the banker. Okay, and I lose. Okay. Okay, we got a chop going on here. I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play the drop. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna go 50 this time. Okay, I lose again. Okay, so right now we got we got a chop board going now. Okay. I'm gonna play the drop because I still believe. That these are going to start dropping. Sooner or later, they're going to start dropping, and I'm going to be on that long run. Okay, so sooner or later, that's going to happen. So I'm going to go with Banker again, and I'm going to raise my, my bet a little bit. I'm going to put $100 on Banker this time. All right, and I got the win, okay? So you don't have to win them all. 
you just want to try to be like at least 25% accurate, which is one out of every four. If you could do that, you should win. Um, if you keep losing, then I don't recommend that you keep Martingale. I don't recommend more than two or three Martingales. Um, just you can you can raise your bet up a little higher, um, of you know as you're going along, but like so for example, if you're normally 25 a hand and you lost two Martingales in a row and then you start back at the 25 after you get a couple wins. Yeah, sure, you might take a chance like I just did, and you throw 100 bucks out there. You could do that. Okay, so again, we're going to go with the drop, because if we can catch this bad boy and we can run it all the way down, we're going to make some money and we'll be able to get off the table. Every time I'm playing, I'm not playing for fun. I'm actually playing to win money and get off the table. So because I gamble all the time, it's not fun to me. Like, sure, but it's more of a job. So when I am gambling, if you gave me the option, Jimmy, you want $400 within the first minute and you get and you can't play no more, I'd be 100%. Yes, that's what I want. Yes, give me the 400 and I'm done. That, that's, that's, that's fantastic to me. Do not, re, you know, don't be bored that you just won money. Just take the money and... You don't need to gamble. Just go. <laughs> Just go do something else. Okay, so we're going to go with the banker. And I am only going to do 25. Okay, we're going to win again. Okay, we're going to run this all the way down. We're just going to keep, you know, if it drops, play the drop. If it don't drop, play the chop. Okay, we're going to repeat our bet and just roll with it. Okay, we're going to lose. We had a good score, but we still lost. Okay, that's okay. Okay, now, at this point right now, a board doesn't ne always have to end up working out where it stays the same patterns. It doesn't always have to do that. You could get over here on this end of this board, and you could have nothing drop more than three times. But right now, I'm still going to be playing the drops. That's just what I'm going to do with this board's telling me right now. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, 50 bucks on the player. Okay, we get the win. Okay, I'm going to keep playing these drops. I'm going to play it again. I'm going to reduce my bet to a quarter on the player. Okay, we're going to lose. So it did go back to a, to a chop, but I'm going to play that player. I'm still winning 50% of the time. Or, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm going to play that banker. I'm play the red banker. 50 bucks. We get the win. We didn't get a high score, but it doesn't matter in this game. All right, we're averaging 50% to 33% of our bets. So if that always happens, you're always going to win. So it's it's a, if you play the game right, so this is, this is what I was referring to earlier with a lot of the way that the Asian people play. They don't have, they're not experienced when it comes to bet sizing. They don't, they don't analyze things the way that I might do. And um, their betting patterns are weird, like doesn't make any sense. So their style of play is it's like they play like they don't have any patience and they play like five hundred dollars means nothing to them. So uh, not to me. All right. So I'm going to keep going with this banker and uh, I'm pretty much free rolling at this point because, uh, you know, I'm up money. So I'm just going to bet 25. I'm going to win again. So it's so it's really what's really nice about uh, charts like this um based on this is this is the key spot right here where my mouse is. This is the key spot of this game right here. When you have when you have drops here, 
Now, we haven't had one here yet. But if this drops again, right here is a crucial spot because this is the third one. The last third one didn't drop. This one we don't know yet. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and gamble here on this on this drop. Okay, so once again it failed to drop. Okay, so we have had if we if we're right here. Okay, we go across. Nope, it dropped. We go over here. Nope, it dropped. We go here, no, chop, 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 chop. So right now, right now, we have half and half. So this is a very tough, tough um, board because it has a mixture of the first 33% at chop, I'm sorry, at drop, play the drop and then the second part of the board is don't don't drop play the chop so it's very confusing it's very difficult type of board to 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 win so you're pretty much just trying to survive it and get 33 percent of your picks right so you still mathematically even if you don't know what the heck it's going to do you still mathematically have a chance to win. So playing two, playing the drop so far is still working for us. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to go ahead and bet the player. We're going to still play the drop. Okay, We're just going to do 50 bucks on the player. Okay, that's a tie. So let's just repeat the bet. All right, we're going to get the win. So like I said, even when a board is confusing, you know, you just kind of stick with what you see happening more. Look, drop, 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 chop, 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 drop, 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 chop, drop, 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 drop. You see what I'm saying? So... I think you can keep that mathematically statistic of winning 50%, winning 33%. Even if you're only winning 25%, you still are going to win on a Martingale system. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, look, at, look at how much we're up. We're up $163. So we're going to go ahead and just cash out. Um, I'm happy with the $163. It's not a lot of money. I haven't had any um, stress whatsoever. I haven't gotten down hardly at all. I've been consistently winning overall about 35 to 40% of every time I bet, which is going to be uh, an easy session. There's sometimes you'll play it where you win 80%. So now I do have... You know, I do usually have a little moral code that I use where if if I haven't really lost, uh, I, I always like to maybe do one more. Uh, but I always say to myself, okay, 163, if I lose 25, am I okay with only winning, you know, $130? And if the answer is yes, then I'll do that one more because it's very possible I could go up to 185 and then I could win the next 25 and I could be over 200. So we'll give it a shot one more, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and just um, we're gonna go ahead and just do the drop. We'll play the player. If we lose, we're done. If we win, we'll play another one. All right, and it worked out for us, okay? So we're richer than we were before. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do it again. Now, even though the second part of the board is not having anything get past three. Most people, most people are going to go ahead and play a chop here. Most people will because they're looking at what it's done recently. Okay. And what it's done the majority of the time. Okay. We had one, two times, one time, two times, 
three, four, five. Okay, so the majority of the time is about equal. It's equal. I, there's no wrong choice here. If you want to play the, the run, the drop, you can play it. If you want to play the chop, to be honest with you, it's 50-50 right now. There's no way you could tell if it's going to do what it's going to do because it's all over the place. Like you, you are even, you, there's no guarantee. So the reality is, is you're just gambling. That's the bottom line. And we don't care because we're, no matter what, we're leaving what I said I was going to leave with anyway, whether I win this or I don't. If I win, it's just icing on the cake and I'll play another one. All right, we got beat by a nine. We had a good score of seven, but we got beat by a nine. And then there's, I got my 163. I lost $5 for trying. So, and that's it. That's the end of it. So, right now, from, from this point right here where my mouse is, this has been a chop board. It has been a chop board. So, um, it's, a, it's a very tough board. And when I see a tough board like this and I'm up profit, I'm gone. That's it. I'll take the 163 and I'll call it a day. If the board is easy pickings and I'm just killing it, then I'm staying. <laughs> I'm staying. But on this type of board, peace out. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And I'll have some more Baccarat for you soon.